If you want to know how to get monster youth picks for your youth academy, you should join us for this video. Hey guys, I'm Uncle Mish. And I'm Lena Z. And today we'll be talking about the best tips how to get monster youth picks. A lot of the times manager ask me how do people get those monster youth academy players that yield great profit or you could build your team upon. And just last week I was speaking to a really cool manager at Lutfan1 and he gave me the inspiration to do this video for you. To explain why does the scout region matter, how to rank scout comments by strength when to call your player, which league to use, how to train your players and everything else. So let's start with it. And if you'll wait patiently till the end, we'll be calling our scouts. Yeah, or you could just skip to the end of the video and check our result. But now let's start. So first of all, you should know that it's best to have free scouts because if you have free scouts, you have more chance to get great players. If you're calling your scout, your first scout, and he's giving you a bad player, just reject it and move to the next one. So it's pretty straightforward, use free scouts. It's worth the money. Next, you should always play a four team league. It's very, very important because once you have your players, you want to give them as much trainings as possible. And when you are using a four team league, your league will end after six weeks. And you could close your league, start a new league, and the new league will start two days after you finish the next one. So you don't need to wait seven days for your next youth match. You are waiting only two days and saving five. And if you are doing this repetitively, you will give your players more trainings because in the youth academy the training is not once a week it's just after your your match then on your youth academy uh, matches always use the play creative tactic because when you are using play creative tactic you are helping to reveal specialities. Not every player in the Youth Academy will have a speciality. It's considered that between third and half of all Youth Academy players has a speciality, but you are not getting those players with the revealed speciality. Only some of them will be. So you want to get more information. You want to know on which players to focus and it will help you to make great decisions if you know if someone have specialities. So if you're playing creative, you are increasing the chance that players that do have specialities will make those special events happen during the match. And then bam, you are getting more information and you know you are revealing their speciality. Next tip is uh, which players to search. When you have your scouts, you could say to him, you should search for a certain type of player, forward, winger, midfielder, goalkeeper, or just search for any type of player. And as you see here, Drake saying, you should always call any type of player. It doesn't really matter if you are looking for a forward, forward because if you're searching for any type of player, the max overall level of the player will be higher. If you're searching for a certain type of player, you have a slightly higher chance to get a better certain player, but overall he'll be weaker. But let's say you want a forward. If you're searching for a forward, you'll maybe get a forward with solid scoring skill, but all the other skills will be bad because on average he's worse. Uh, let's compare him to another player that has only a weak for, uh, scoring, but his other secondary skills for a forward, wing, playmaking and passing could be passable, six. Overall, this player in your senior team will be much stronger forward in the future. So you don't need like one skill. This means always focus on any type of player for all your scouts. And then, are you ready to go swimming? Ooh, summertime. Okay, so uh, here is when something is uh, like a hidden tip, let's say it like this. You are setting each and every one of your scouts for a region. Most people just do it for the region their team is playing because it's cool. But it's better to set the region of your scout to the smallest region in your country. 
And the reason is, and you could go to your country and check all the regions and serve them by amount of teams in the country. In, in the country, and you'll get the smallest region. And why you should know it? You want your scouts to be calling the smallest, smallest region possible because every region has a player pool. The smaller the region, the smaller the player pool. The bigger the region, the bigger the player pool. Your scout will call and pick one of the players for, from this player pool. And you'll have 15-year-old and 16-year-old players in the player pool. When a player will exit the player pool, either one of the scouts uh, picked him, either the player turned 17 and automatically he is being uh, sent off, deleted from the player pool, and a new player will be generated. Or a player was rejected three times. In bigger regions, you can't refresh the pool that quickly because even if everyone is calling the scouts, you'll still have players being in the pool, not being picked, getting older in the pool, and then you could call a player just before he's 17 and it's a bad player, it's a bad prospect. In a smaller region, we are able to refresh the pool quicker and this way, on average, we'll have younger players. It doesn't mean we'll have better players, but if we'll have a double solid player and we could uh, promote him at 17 and 0 days and we could promote him at 17 and 80 days, it's a massive difference. It's a star and just a normal player. So always aim for the smallest region possible. And we have all our um, uh, scouts in the smallest region possible. It's actually in Eilat. It's a resort city in our country. So we are always going there to call the scouts. Yep. Vacation time. Here it's something uh, very superstitious. When to call your scout. This big button. When do you call it? Some people, they, they believe in everything. You are able to call your scout once a week. And it refreshes during one hour after the financial update. So some people say it's better to call before, after the financial update. Some people have a certain day or a certain hour that they really like. Overall, uh, a long time ago, a, a long time ago, uh, when a pool, a player pool, could have been empty. And if you called the scout when the pool was empty, you, will, you would get like no one. He'll say, sorry, I didn't find anyone. And that's a big problem. Hattrick actually changed it. And right now, if you're calling an empty pool, a player will be automatically generated. And that's wonderful. That's why it doesn't really matter when to call the scouts. But some people believe in everything. Uh, during the last few years, we were calling the scouts uh, just before the financial updates during our Friday streams. And for the most part, we had very bad players. But just yesterday, uh, during the stream with Johan, both of us got a, a really good call. So we'll see. But today is Saturday, a day after the financial update. It was just last night. And we'll be calling at the end of the video. So you could see what's better. So do whatever you believe in. Then I think that's one of the most important tips that I could give you. Some information about scout comments and how to rank scout comments by strength, uh, like poker hands, which is better, which is stronger. So first of all, the scout will give you information about the three top skills of a player. So from this, you could derive if a player could be even better or that's the best that he could be. Every third uh, comment, every sc third, third scout will give you another information and that's the overall skill of a player. That's something that you could uh, understand more information about the player. And every tenth scout will say if a player have a speciality or not. Uh, but more players could have a speciality even if the scout doesn't say it. So let's rank uh, the scout comments by strength that you'll know which uh, uh, comments you should definitely take and which not. So first of all, you'll be getting either 15-year-old or 16-year-old players. 
15 year old is considered better, but 16, 16 year old players will still be good enough in certain situations. In the past, you could have even a 17 year old player, but right now it's not possible at all. So as an S tier, I would rank if you have a comment of a player has an overall solid skill. That's amazing. I think that's the best you could have. You can't have excellent uh, overall skill, but excellent solid skill, it's something that it's possible. And when we are speaking about overall skill, the overall skill is very functional. The overall skill says what's the maximum skill of all the players, all of the player skills, what's the current skill of all the player skills, and it makes the average between them. So sometimes the same overall skill could be for a mediocre player and a, a, a really massive, massively good player. So, but overall, solid players are amazing. The next thing that I would say, the overall passable uh, player is the next one on my S uh, tier list. Then if a player has an excellent potential in one of his skills, then if he has a current solid skill on one of his skills or a solid potential skill, I would consider every one of those as an S tier comment. The next one is the A tier comment, very good comments as well. Uh, passable skill, uh, passable skill currently, then the passable potential in one of his skills, and also the speciality. I would consider all of this to be an A tier comment. In the B tier, we'll have the overall inadequate, the inadequate current skill, and the inadequate potential. And as an S tier, we will have a weak skill or a weak potential. Just uh, remember that if you have a weak potential skill, which is an C tier comment, and you're saying, hey, that's pretty bad, it's just the information about one of the three best skills of the player. Maybe you'll get this comment, he has a weak current skill, and it's about his last third skill, and maybe the potential of the skill will be passable, and the other two skills are solid and solid, so overall, that's an amazingly good player, and maybe Evan has a speciality, so uh, you have to make decisions. If you have your calls, first scout giving you like B or C tier comments, I wouldn't take him. If uh, it the second scout, maybe I'll consider a B tier comment. Um, and when the, you are calling the third scout, you always take the third scout's call. Because if you won't take him, the player will stay in the player pool. And, and next week, yeah, next week you could be unlucky and get the same player. Or in uh, the same week. Yeah, sometimes you're actually, yeah, it happened to us. When you're calling the scout, you're ejecting a player. Next player you're calling because the scout is in the same uh, uh, region will give you the same one. So just um, as an example, this is my best player currently in the Youth Academy. And when I called the scout, he gave me the next information. He was a 15 year old player, which is like an SA tier comment. He was a current weak skill in passing, which is a C tier comment. And he was an all, all, all around passable player, S tier comment, and he could be a solid potential in uh, scoring so that's uh, another S tier comment so obviously I took him 15 year old player why wouldn't you and he's my best player currently so ju just one of the things about the decision making that we need to do scout comment strength hopefully this will really really help you and nothing below C tier unless it's a third scout Let's see, how to train your players. So a few things that you should know, and I made a video, a special video about how to reveal special, uh, how, to, sorry, how to reveal current skill and potential skill. But um, the best tip is focus on your star player. Don't focus on everyone. Don't try to train every skill for a, any like mediocre player. You have one player, focus on him maximize the skills. If someone else could benefit from it, cool. If not, doesn't matter. If you have mediocre player staying poor, uh, like uh, bad players, and you won't profit anything from them, that's fine. Because one big player, you could sell him for five, 
10, 15, and even 20 million euros. Yeah. And other like mediocre players, they're going for a couple hundred thousand. So just think about it. If you have one monster every two week seasons, that's massively better than having a mediocre player every week. So your pr primary training will reveal a current level for your player, a secondary training will reveal the max level of the player, and every week you are getting another random max potential during the training report. Another tip you could see here that I'm playing only with 9 players and not 11 players, because the minimum amount of players that you need for a game is 9. And I don't want to play with all the players because other players are pretty bad. And I want to try and force this random max reveal for one of my better players to get more information, to understand who's the best players that I have, and then to make the decisions how to focus their training. As you can see here, the tactic is always play creative. Uh, so the flow chart of what you do. You call the scout, you have a prospect, you're trying to reveal his skills. If he has low skills, you're just going for the next prospect. If he has, has high skills, you consider him your star, star player and focus all your trainings to train him. Here we have a difference. If you train him for profit or you train him for your team. If you train him for your team, you want to do something called deep training. And if you train him for profit, it's shallow training. Um, the basis is the same. You try and max his skills. But when you try and max his skill, you could see on this player, his passing is 6 out of 6 and his scoring is 7 out of 6, uh, 7 out of 7. But the scoring is yellow. This means that I maxed his sub level as well because he's not only 7, he's 7 and a half. But his passing, it's 6 out of 6 and I could still train his sub level. If I want to sell him for profit, it doesn't matter. I don't need to waste my time and train uh, sub uh, levels because in the transfer market, it won't show. It will show in the TSI and other things, but I could go to my next prospect. But if I train him for my team, for cycle training or uh, to train him for national teams, you want to do deep training and you want to give him sub levels as well because in the senior team he'll pop faster and it will be even be better so after you focused everything on your star player you are going to your next prospect and guys that was it about the best tips how to do monster picks should we try our monster picks yep that was Definitely. a lot of information right yep let's try to use it okay so um Wait a second, I'll just close it out. That was the manager I was speaking about, uh, the, the tips, and he gave me the inspiration for this video. So should I go first? Do you want to go first? You first. Okay, so I have three teams. I have one team in Ethiopia, and I just set all the scouts for the smallest region possible. You could see it here if I'm going to Ethiopia. Um, I am going to regions, 11 regions in Ethiopia, and I'll sort them by number of teams. I'll have this region, only four teams playing in this region. And in the biggest region, if 57, so the player pool there is bigger. So back to my scouts. Let's see, I'm calling the first one. And he'll give me a 15 year old, which is an S tier comment. A passable current skill, Again. which is really, really good. But he's saying like a, a poor capability in wing, which is below C tier. And another weak overall, that's really, really bad. So this player is probably a mono skill player. He has only one good skill and that's it. Um, I'll take the chance. I want something better. And that would be unknown. That would be a no. Let's call the next one. He'll give me a 16-year-old player, weak and passable. So I have one A-tier comment, one C-tier comment, and 16-year-old, I don't want this. I'm starting to regret for rejecting the first call. And the last one will give me a 16-year-old player, poor and weak. That's even worse. That's one C-tier comment, one below C-tier comment, 16 year old player that's very very bad 
but I will take him because I want to clear the player pool. Okay, uh, your t your turn. Uh, yes. Or we, should I call uh, another? We can uh, switch it up a little. Okay, so I'm I'm actually Lena's mentor, so I'll be able to show you her her picks. Okay, let's okay. begin. And I'm refreshing. Lena. So we had a 15 year old with all around with playmaking week and an all around uh, and week passing. Okay, so that's so, two C tier comments for yeah. a 15 year old player. That would be a no. Okay, so you're taking the chance. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. The first one. Let's try to see what we can get. Okay, so another 16 year old weak winger and inadequate scoring. So that's one C tier comment one and a B tier comment, and uh, the age is B C tier. So again, no. Yeah, I wouldn't take him. And last one. 16 year old, weak defending, passable winger, and an unpredictable. So that's awesome. 16 yes. year old. So I have a speciality. You have a speciality, with, which is an A tier comment. You have a passable uh, potential, which is an A tier comment, and you have one uh, C tier comment. I would take him uh, even if it wasn't my third one. Yeah, definitely. Th that could be a nice player. And let's see uh, what's his age, 16 and how many days? His name is... And 69 days, so a little bit old. Oh, that, that's really bad. 69? Yeah. Yep, his name is Hanan Vazena. Where is it? Okay, okay. So you could see here, if he was a 16 year old and five days, six days, 10 days, he could be really, really nice player. Maybe he's still a really, really nice player, but he'll be promoted at 1769. Nice. Uh, but yeah, a bit lo old. Yeah. So I'll, I'll quickly call mine and, sure. and we'll finish with that. Let's see. Uh, Black Sabbath or Sherlock's? Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath, okay. First scout. Uh, overall inadequate, 16 year old, weak, weak. So overall, um, it's a lot of bad tier scout uh, comments. So I won't take him. The next one will give me a 15 year old. Ooh, nice, I like it. 15 year old. That's an S tier comment or A tier comment. Uh, weak level, which is a C tier comment, but solid wing, which is an which is, S tier comment. Him. Yeah, I'll, I'll take him as well. Let's see. 15 year old and 21 days. This that's, means that he's good. really, really young and we could actually train him for a long time. Oh, well, maybe Saturday is a good uh, day to, to call the scouts. Maybe we should start. And uh, my last team, let, let's see, let's, let's be lucky again. I, I'd love it. Uh, Gil Shirazi, let's call him first. He'll give me... Interesting. 16-year-old player. Um, wing passable, which is 8-year. Inadequate overall. Inadequate playmaking. And a speciality. So overall, that's 8-year, 8-year and um, two beat your uh, call uh, but it's he, good yeah but i don't know i feel like he could be 16 year old and a lot of days that's the first call it sometimes the decision making is also dependent on which players you already have in your youth academy if you have a big star right now that you are focusing on and you still have a lot of time to train this star you, you don't feel really obligated to to take anyone so you could add another player and that could be good and um, if you are but if you don't have a star you want to take even a normal player and focus on him for the meanwhile uh, and and then maybe switch so i have a big star in my youth academy in this team so i will reject this one maybe i'll regret it a frony johanna johanna okay um maybe i'll regret it but let's see i love those 15 year old players 16 year old player inadequate scoring weak that's definitely not good okay i won't take him and i immediately regret, regret the, well, the previous one yeah um and instead I'll, oh yeah, yeah. That, this is bad 16 year old <laughs> player weak 
for well it happens you know sometimes you want to get this player in your third scout because then you're saying okay at least i got something but i have to take him as he's the third scout and you always clear the player pool so now i would love to to hear from you what do you think do you have other tips how to pick monster players do you rank the scout strength comment in a different way uh, when do you uh, what do you think is more important and when do you call the scouts do you have like a special ritual a special uh, thing that you are doing before calling them for better luck please share it in the comments we'd love to to hear that and to help you raise your future youth pick monsters good luck definitely see you all and as we always say hat trick it's more than a game it's a community we will see you at your next pick.